Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, Timo, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Fine, fine, thank you. I, I guess it's a bit late <laughs> there, right? You're in... Yeah, it's nine now in the evening. Nine in the evening, okay. No, I, I thought it, it was 11, but okay, that's not so ah, bad. No. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Yeah, I guess we can we can get started right now that we are ten people. I will I will post the meeting notes here. And I will share my screen just to show you the agenda. I hope it's okay. Yes, you can, you can see my screen, right? Yeah. It's a good one. It, it, I mean, it, it's the, the correct screen because I have three screens. I I, I, I don't know if I'm sharing the, 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 the correct one. Flexing, yeah. uh, flexing with your screens. Uh, um, it's uh, the meeting notes. Okay, okay. So it's not the, the prohibited screen. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, welcome to this uh, meeting, the, the November no, November 9th of Aries Framework JavaScript. I would like to remember that this is a Hyperledger Foundation Linux uh, Foundation meeting, so the code of conduct is in is in uh, in effect. So if you want it to, you can read it. And uh, I don't know if it's, it's anybody new here today who wants to introduce themselves. No, you're too shy. All right. Well, I will introduce my colleague, Gabriel, who is joining this meeting for the first time. He's working with me on, on 2060 and the backend part. So hopefully we will have some interesting news in the incoming weeks about, uh, especially about uh, horizontal sc scaling and, and, uh, and especially on the, on the messaging part. So uh, I would like to just to, to welcome him to, to these meetings and, and I hope to have Lots of uh, commits in the framework in the in the incoming month. Thank you, thank you, Ariel. How is <laughs> <are you> going? <laughs> Fine, thank you. <laughs> As you can see, we 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 are, we are getting more and more uh, Spanish names in in, in this uh, in this uh, meeting. So probably in a few 
in a few weeks or so, yeah, we are starting speaking in Spanish. So you, you have to learn, right, guys? That is against uh, the policy. I'm sorry. You just asked us to read. Okay, but probably <laughs> if, if, if we are going to move to OWF, it's different, right? <laughs> Dutch then. Okay, so uh, we can start on the uh, status updates. I don't know if, if anybody has attended the Bifold week, the Bifold meeting this week. I don't know if there was any meeting this week. Okay, it seems it doesn't. And what about the, the areas call? I didn't attend yesterday, but I took some, at least some uh, highlights of what I have seen in the meeting notes. And also from from last, from previous week, the meeting, there was some points about unqualified deeds. Uh, this, this is more mostly, I don't know if you remember, but it's about the, the the community coordinated update to get rid of the previous unqualified deeds uh, and to to move to to qualified deeds in order to to be able to do a, an easiest transition to did comp two and uh, there were some points here we have let's say three major uh, updates on the frameworks in order to support that. One of them is about the this rotation, which is a new protocol <clears throat> uh, that allows, for instance, to switch from a DITCOM v1 connection to a D2 connection, but also to switch uh, DITs, to rotate DITs for, for V2 connections or V1 connections as well, right? Uh, we have the update for DIT peer 4 and some, finally, we got some consensus about uh, the exchange. I don't know if you remember, but we have this issue about uh, how we can sign the DIT document uh, when doing the DIT exchange request and this response and that stuff. So basically we are going to update to to, to move to a, to a 1.1 1 .1 protocol to, in order to to add this and um, and yeah so uh, in regards of what, what we are doing in AFJ we can we have some work being done in in, in in this stuff at least in order to support we have a a PR a, a draft PR I sorry that I cannot see my yeah. Uh, to support the did peer two and public did deeds on the on did exchange, so we have to update this this PR in order to support the new uh, signatures and and also probably the did peer four right. Uh, so basically, if I understood correctly, the idea from the community is to be able to by the end of the year to to support all this stuff and then wait a few, a few months more to default to new i mean to to default to ptp4 and 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 i start using it instead of unqualified or did peer one edits um so yeah that's more or less what they were discussing about about this topic uh, there is also an interest on on supporting the conv2 there was some discussion about that there is some ideas about supporting it early 2024 i don't know what early means actually i will say what do you what do you, what, what do you mean by early i will say january february march um, but yeah I think this is more or less in line what we were discussing about our roadmap in that uh, we are planning to support 
with Convi2 on the next major release after 05. So maybe it's a, it's a good timing to, to do so. And also there was some discussion about LTS policy. I don't know about this. Is anybody, I think Timo, Timo, you, you were uh, reviewing it, right? Yeah, I wasn't involved in the discussion uh, or anything. I just read through the RFC, um, but my comment was more about that. I don't necessarily see this as something that belongs in the Ares RFC's repo. I see that more as like a standards protocols kind of thing. And um, um, this feels more like specific to a project that, that could add it, uh, like Ekapi, if they want to have long-term support releases but i think this is very specific to to a software project so um yeah I, I don't think if it helps to add it to the rs rfcs can i add a con comment here yeah um we awesome. were, yeah sorry i joined late um <laughs> I, I had some link confusion i think the hyperledger calendar still has the old meeting link um and so it took me a second to find the right one um so the reason this came into existence was because I had folks from Hitachi reach out and they uh, they mentioned that their in Japan their their software development cycles are often uh, substantially slower than sort of is common elsewhere in the world and that they um, that they wanted to use Aries code bases not just one but several and uh, and having a a long term support policy and some some sort of regular guarantees of support would be good. So Timo, you're totally correct in the fact that there, there's there's no actual um, uh, utility here directly um, and, and all of the effort would actually need to be taken up by code projects. Uh, their point though was that if, if the uh, various areas projects um, have a, you know, a, a similar policy that, uh, that can be applied, then it makes it substantially easier to use the code bases together. Um, and, and so, and they were seeking not just to use one, but, but several. And so that's what the motivation behind this was. They pointed to fabric, um, as, and I linked to it at the bottom of this. Um, and so this is intended to be sort of a, a concept, uh, that is, is declared here. Uh, but then all of the relevant details, like which releases are actually considered long-term support, et cetera, are actually taken by the projects themselves. That's kind of what the motivation for this was. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Still not sure if I totally agree with adding it here, uh, but maybe that's just my that my understanding of what the Ares RFCs are for is misaligned. Then, um, you'll notice that it's a concept RFC, not a feature RFC. So feature RFCs is typically where protocols land. Um, concept RFCs are sort of larger things that aren't re uh, specifically related to protocol design or, or anything else. Um, and so uh, I, I don't know if that helps understanding or not, but that's that's why it landed there. I think um, it's it's I think it hooks into again in like the a lot of the discussions we've already had on that there's a lot of misunderstanding in ARIs between like to support the ARIs RFCs, you don't need to, um, you don't need to be an hyperledger project per se. You can make your own implementation of it. And like adding these type types of um, things in here, I think it adds to the confusion of what ARIs is. And it's more than the projects that are hosted in a hyperledger to me. It's a way to issue credentials and verify them over DITCOM um with interoperability targets and so i think it 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 doesn't help arise to yeah be broader than just the projects I, that are hosted on their high pleasure a couple thoughts one is is that uh classifying aries rfcs is only describing how to to transfer credentials over didcom i think is very very narrow the 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 point of aries rfcs has always been as a way to document uh standard ways of interaction but it's never been limited to verifiable credentials. And it, and it did come has been the focus because there simply wasn't any other way place for it to happen. Um, but, but the whole goal was to make that 
work in that way. And, and concept RFCs are similarly a way to sort of coordinate efforts. So the question I have for you is that I, I very much believe in the goal that Hitachi has um, for um, having a long-term support uh, release. And they, they had a desire to have long-term support releases across the multiple code bases in Aries. So if it doesn't belong here, where should it go? I, I'm less interested in, in it, the fact that it has to be an Aries RFC. I'm very interested in the concept happening. So what's a better location if an Aries RFC is an inappropriate place? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good question that I'm not not sure of. Um, maybe in the Aries repository that the other ones can link to. Uh, but yeah, that's a good question. I, I, if you have trouble answering that question, I would posit that perhaps your view of what Aries RFCs are, it may not be quite correct. Yeah, no, I think I'm just advocating, I think, for the Aries RFCs to be something different than they are now, but then that's probably a different discussion. Okay. Well, I think being clear on what they are, I don't want to drag this out too long, but that's what the motivating factor for this was. Um, was an external request from our community to make it easier to use the various uh, areas uh, code bases. So anyway, that's all the context that that I really wanted to add there. Okay, thank you. It's good to have these uh, uh, clarifications. So yeah, I think we can we can start on the on the agenda because we have this uh, very interesting presentation from Yaku and Neil about the Absa wallet. And also we will have some updates from about the proposal or to move into OWF. And let's see if we have time for the rest. <laughs> but I, I'm not sure, so we will see. So yeah, uh, Yaku, Neil, if you want to, I guess you will want to share the screen, right? Yes. Okay, I will stop sharing. Okay. Thank you. So, hi everyone. Uh, long time no see. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Nice. Let me check if it works. Okay. Uh, yeah, so hi everyone. Again, I'm Jakub and uh, together Together with my colleague Nile, uh, we'd like to share some uh, some work uh, we are doing here at APSA and how we benefit from AFJ and maybe also provide some feedback uh, uh, back to the development process. Okay, so uh, yeah, APSA, uh, our, our, uh, APSA, our APSA identity wallet is a mobile app. Uh, currently and finally in production for for a few months, but uh, uh, we did uh, we have been doing so like uh, so big, quite big uh, refactoring uh, as you will see. Uh, so we haven't promoted that uh, thing so far uh, so much. Uh, it's deployed for three app stores. Uh, it's uh, I was on on App Store of course, and uh, there is Android version. On Google Play and also on Huawei Gallery. Uh, okay, yeah, there are some links uh, I can eventually share or if anyone wants to uh, check it out. And now uh, let me jump to the short demo I, I prepared. I recorded it. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is our mobile app. Uh, some uh, onboarding with uh, like yeah, entering passcode, uh, uh, regular stuff. I think nothing uh, significant. Face ID, yeah. Uh, creating the wallet, and now we are going through the KYC process, or now we are customer process, where we uh, gather some uh, necessary details to be able to issue uh, the, the user digital identity. Uh, so like, I think this is the main thing, like the, the ID number, the phone number is not so so important because we, we just use it as a protection uh, from some like uh, DOS attacks, let's say. 
uh, yeah, so there is the that uh, full ID number. Now you can see that uh, we are doing some selfie verification, uh, liveness scanning, and stuff like that. And if it's successful, then we can issue a verifiable credential in uh, for uh, like verifiable credential for your or as your digital identity. Yeah, now we have it. Uh, you can see the detail, and uh, we can uh, we can use it. Uh, as you can see here, there is some like uh, our uh, upsa banking demo, as we call it. Uh, and because we are in the world of SSI, we don't have to uh, fill in the forms anymore. So we can just scan the QR code. And this is uh, this is proof request. Uh, now we can see it's again from APSA, but it can be uh, any other institution uh, using uh, ARIS protocols. Uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see for the user maybe from uh, the part like, uh, uh, yeah, the, the particular credential. Uh, uh, where where does it come from? From what what uh, what? Uh, so so particular part, sorry particular claim. Uh, uh, what from what was the credential it comes from? Uh, yeah, now we share it, and uh, as you can see now, I am gonna use the scan QR code again. I'm I'm still on the same page. And here you can see that like there are some details about uh, bank account number. So I again scan the QR code and receive credential about my uh, bank account. And I have two credentials. Uh, and what's what's uh, I think uh, good in SSI that, that like yeah, we would like to provide the user the information uh, about about what happened. So this is kind kind of like audit log uh, where you can where the user can see. Um, what and uh, when and with whom uh, uh, shared before for data and yeah uh, that's that's uh, that's basically short demo about uh, what we built. Uh, okay, so yeah, let me let us. If you have any questions, uh, we can we can let them to return to this uh, demo later. Uh, but now, now maybe let's let's finish uh, the the this short presentation. Uh, so yeah, about about the AFJ, uh, we actually uh, we were using Aris VCX, and then I think uh, uh, it's it's uh, almost uh, more than a year ago we started migration from Aris VCX to uh, AFJ. Uh, it took us from uh, I think about two two three months. Uh, 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 Nile basically, my colleague Nile basically did that, and he he, he was a newcomer to the SSI. So that's kind of a good sign of of how how uh, user friendly is is AFJ or AFJ is. Uh, in here, we we basically removed almost three thousand lines of code, preserving all the functionality we had before, and uh, also like uh, benef benef benefiting from from other protocols like the exchange OOB. Uh, some kind of multi-ledger support we are like utilizing right now. We are doing some interoperability with with uh, Redex company. Uh, they are using Akapai, so uh, it's nice nice demonstration how AFJ can work uh, uh, work, work uh, fine with with different framework. There are still some issues uh, in some corner uh, cases or edge cases uh, which we have to address. But but uh, general basic like the general flow. Issuing crunch, very fine crunch, so uh, very fine proofs is it's, it's there. Uh, because AFJ is possible to use also on the backend side uh, as a mediator, uh, it's 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 great that uh, that we we were able to we were able to use it uh, to use it also uh, instead of uh, no no V6 no agency which was implemented before in Node.js. And it was like custom custom development uh, to make it work with Aris VC, VCX, which uh, didn't have uh, the mediator before. And as you can see now, it was even more significant. So we could remove almost ten thousand, like not not remove ten thousand, but remove the six six thousand uh, around six thousand lines of code. Uh, again, preserving all the functionality. 
uh, actually adding even even bit bit more. Uh, I think the WebSockets wasn't there before. Now now we have also WebSockets out of the box. Uh, yeah, uh, so that was that was nice. Uh, sorry. Oh come on. Yeah, that that uh, in total is almost uh, ten thousand lines of code removed. Uh, so this is this is great. And uh, yeah, uh, during that we we had to add some custom enhancement, and uh, maybe we can share also some small problems uh, or uh, issues we uh, we went through during the migration. But that's that's uh, not now. Uh, I'll pass it on uh, to my colleague Nile. Uh, we'll share more details about that. Maybe show some code. So now it's it's yours now. Yep. Uh, so I'll share my screen now as well. Oh, I said, oh, you have to stop sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, oh, sorry, guys. Give me a second. I have to yeah. restart Google Chrome because <laughs> it needs permissions. No, so the struggle. It's there. I'll be in one minute. You have a Mac, right? I think, I think this, this happens every meeting almost. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, in the meantime, I don't know if there are any questions. Maybe we can we can address them. Uh, yes, there are a few. Uh -huh. uh, Timo asks. Is, yeah, Timo. Is, yeah, of is, course. Is yeah, that was the reason. That was the reason for ARJ. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, actually, maybe maybe about the migration. It took us two, three, two from two to three months. Um, uh, just just the refactoring, but then. Uh, we, we we were waiting for deployment on, on of the mediator actually to our backend infrastructure, which uh, uh, we were we were struggling with a bit, but it wasn't related to the AFJ. It was more related to uh, our infrastructure issues. Okay, yeah, and, so and, and, and the, the, the second question is about uh, we, yeah. Rim is asking about the ledgers that you you are supporting. Yeah, ledgers uh, currently. Okay, the, the multi ledger it's it's a bit uh, it might be a bit misleading, but by multi ledger I mean that we can set up the wallet with multiple Genesis files or configs, let's say, and then we can switch between them. I think in in the runtime, we we are not using that right now uh, because our backend is not ready for that. But I think it's it's quite quite nice that that you can you can set up the wallet in, in that in that way. Uh, but for, from ledger perspective, we with Didex we are running our own testing ledger, uh, and the rest is is uh, is running against the sovereign sovereign staging or testnet. I don't know. I don't remember the name. So testnet and and product or mainnet. Uh, so it's it's a sovereign in the in the ledger. Right. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, do, do you support multi instance of deployment? No, no, we like. I'm not. We we don't. We don't. We have just one one instance deployment. So I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure how difficult it would be to make it more. Like it's it's also a question. What what does it mean actually? Like multi instance deployments. But if you mean like many deployments of metadata. Connecting to one database, that would be probably possible, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure we, we are not running that, that, that in that way. And yes, uh, in the SDK, we are we are in uh, that that's something uh, now now will will show you. But uh, basically, we are we we still have in the SDK in our mobile app because there were some struggles with migration. But Medate is, is is running with Eris Ascar, and yeah, Eris Ascar, and there there is no need for other libraries. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready now. <laughs> sorry, sorry about the interruption, guys. Uh, can everyone hear me and see the screen? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about is uh, a model that we're using to enhance the proof and credential records inside AFJ. And um, so as, as we already know, uh, in AFJ, we have a record-based system, which means when we get the credentials or get the proofs, we are returned with either a credential exchange record uh, or a proof exchange record, uh, right? Um, however, that has its benefits and limitations. And one of the limitations is that it's a little bit 
trickier uh, if we also want to get the the messages that are associated with the, those records in like a synchronous fashion, right? So uh, what we do is we create like an enhanced record uh, where we first get all of the credentials and then the offer message that's associated with them. Uh, we find that offer message. So that's that will just be find offer message by ID uh, here. So we have credential.id. Uh, and then we're able to uh, store this inside our local Redux state. So our Redux state we have, uh, maybe I can show. We have a record, a record Redux state, and we're able to, uh, the, the records has all of them. So it's the, both the proof records and the credential records, but these are the enhanced records. So all of the messages that are associated with them, be it for uh, the credential, we just store the offer message locally. But for the, proof uh, for the proof record, we also have the proof request. So the initial message and the proof presentation. Uh, and this is particularly useful uh, for, for example, the activity log screen that Jakob showed. Because uh, whilst we're in the activity log screen, we want to show additional information. For example, um, what, what data we submitted with the proof request. So if we accepted the proof request, we want to know what exactly we submitted. Uh, and we also want to know what the proof request contained, of course. Uh, and the same for the credential. We want to know, even if we declined it, we want to know what the credential contained. So we want to know what attributes they would have offered us even had we uh, accepted it. So yeah, that's that's basically the main reason why we're, why we're doing this, uh, as well as uh, in React Native, when you have navigation uh, and you're supposed to pass, uh, you want to pass parameters from one screen to another screen, uh, it's, you're not supposed to pass something which is not uh, like JSON uh, encodable, right? So the, the current uh, implementation of a record, it contains a couple of properties or fields which are not uh, JSON passable. And as such, uh, it's better to just pass an ID. So if we now pass the proof ID or the cre credential ID, uh, we can then query our Redux state to get all of this information uh, at hand. So it's now done in a synchronous fashion. So yeah, I think you might have seen on Jakob's slides, but basically the way that we do this is it's called an app startup. Uh, so we want to get all of this information done straight away. And then anytime we receive a message about a credential or a proof, we then add it to the relative credential or proof exchange record in at, at runtime. So then when we want to look at it, we can look at it synchronously. So that's the that's the first point that I wanted to demonstrate, just something, a nice little demonstration of some additional functionality we've added. Uh, the next bit is something that's actually native to, uh, native to AFJ is the metadata, so credential metadata. Uh, and particularly, we use two types of metadata. So I can show here, we have proof record metadata and credential record metadata. Uh, in the proof record, we, we mainly use it, utilize the metadata for uh, recording when something has gone wrong with the proof request. So be it that we have a proof request that we cannot satisfy. So we have uh, attributes which we don't have, or we have predicates, but not sufficient predicates. For example, they're requesting an age which is greater than or equal to 21, but we have an age which is 18. We can actually store the age that we had at that time and then show it to the user later in the activities when they say, hmm, why, was I, why wasn't I able to uh, satisfy this proof request? So they, they can then go back in time and see, oh, at that time I was only 18. So uh, we're able to record this metadata uh, and the failure reason as well. It's just a user displayable uh, information as to why this proof was not satisfied. 
So here we have unable to satisfy all requested claims and, <coughs> sorry, uh, and we're also able to set the insufficient claims to, well, the insufficient claims. Uh, we're also using uh, the credential credential record metadata to customize the display name of the credential. So uh, in Jakob's uh, demonstration, he showed that we had the digital identity uh, credential. You can actually, in the uh, detail screen, you can click the top right and you can click edit, customize, edit credential name and customize that to anything that you want. And the way that we are able to identify the name is just we check the metadata for this custom name property. Uh, and then, of course, when we're uh, showing in our app, we can use the selector to identify whether or not this custom name metadata exists. If it does, that's the name. Otherwise, defaults to the original name that we either have in a registry or that's associated with the credential. Uh, we also use the error message property, uh, which is native to uh, AFJ uh, proof records. Uh, we, we use that only for uh, like internal debugging. So I think, yeah, right here. Yeah, so credential record, if there's an error message, we're able to identify this for uh, development troubleshooting. And the same with the uh, proof record error message. This also helps to not display the record uh, to the user again, because if we if we can identify that a record has an error associated with it, we don't want it to pop up to the user again, and we can mark it in the activities as erroneous. So those are the the metadata or uh, properties of uh, the records that we change. Uh, and then one final thing, which I felt, thought might have been interesting to look at. I already spoke about we have this insufficient claims uh, property in the metadata, which we can uh, which we can set to the insufficient attributes and predicates. But interestingly, in our application, we want to show which uh, predicates are. Uh, like how do we know what the value was, right? So if it was if it was asking for 21 and older, but ours was only 18, and we want to show them that it was 18, how, how do we calculate what our value was at that time? So we calculate this insufficient predicate values uh, using our own custom implementation. I'll just find that now. Yep. Uh, so basically here we have get all insufficient predicate values and we're first we get the requested predicates from the proof request message. So again, this is relevant to, you know, our application because the proof request isn't normally available within the proof exchange record, but it is for us because it's inside of our Redux state. So we need the requested predicates. And then from that, we get all credential attributes that we have saved in our uh, wallet. And we compare the name of the attribute to the name requested within the predicate. Actually, whilst I was looking at this, I noticed that perhaps it's a little bit incorrect in implementation because maybe it's missing restrictions on the predicate uh, because we don't actually check to make, make sure that the, uh, the credential uh, issuer ID, for example, matches the predicate restricted issuer ID. But that would, you know, it would be easy enough to do as well, right? Like here we already have one condition that we match against. All we would have to do is check the restriction as well. So you can see that's how that's how we're able to get one of these enhanced values. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything that I'm wanting to show, unless anyone has any specific questions that I can answer or go over. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe there is a question from Timo about TypeScript. So yeah, we when we started with the with building the app, like start, I think type TypeScript was still still growing. Uh, maybe the flow was a thing before uh, back then. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think it was, it was fine. AFJ, AFJ using AFJ from JS, it was quite fine. We haven't uh, we haven't found any issues uh, with that. But our plan is, of course, to migrate to TypeScript. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be you know, like like difficult. Uh, it's just the work; it has to be done. You know, change everything at types. Yeah. So to to answer that question, that that's the reason basically. Yeah, it's it's on the roadmap. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, like the JavaScript, like the JavaScript, it, like it's fine. You know, like yeah, to me, the 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 code clarity of the code is is still more important, like than than types. I think if it's uh, if it's clear enough, as and as you can see, like we we definitely can improve the code, uh, uh, but. Uh, yeah, to me, that's the that's like it, 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 it's 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 nice to have TypeScript, but I I don't I I don't feel that we are struggling with JavaScript on its own. Okay, now we can we can move move on. Mm -hmm. uh, Jakob, are you able to share the presentation again? Uh, just... Yes. Uh, briefly. Okay. Yes, here it is. So uh, as Jakob described, oh, maybe he didn't describe already. Uh, in, in the application, uh, we're using AFJ 0 0.3, uh, 0.3.3 to be precise. Uh, the reason for that at the moment uh, is uh, we identified some problems with use frameworks and uh, Aries ASCAR slash NDVDR. Uh, I already opened a... Uh, an issue for this. It was to do with the angled brackets not being interpreted properly, and we needed to have quotes for the imports. Uh, Berend, I'm not, I don't think he's here. He actually uh, already pushed a fix for this, but it hasn't been merged, at least in Aries Asgar. I'm not sure. I, I, I may have not even <laughs> created an issue in uh, NDVDR yet. I'm not sure uh, about that. Yeah, um, I think I just a comment. Yeah, I think it is already there. The in particular with Ascar, we have a, a problem in the with the CI. Recently, we had a, an issue on, on on an image used for for, for for building. So hopefully, I don't know, Timo, what do you if if you have discussed with Andrew about this, but hopefully in a few days or so, <laughs> we can we can have the the new release. So. In that sense, I think we will be good to 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 go. Yeah. So, but it it won't make it until uh, zero four. So it will be in zero five then, um, because yes, there's breaking changes in Oscar also. So probably best to wait then with upgrading to zero four and waiting for zero five then. Uh, and would it be straightforward to migrate, like? between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 or how would that work yeah i think uh there's there's um not a lot of breaking changes because like the main thing for 0 0.5 that's currently planned is um um removing the in the sdk uh to migrate so you can migrate to the shared components it's um and dropping support for node 16 for example but not a lot of api changes Maybe some to issuance of revocable credentials, but that's like new feature. So like if you're a holder wallet, that shouldn't impact too much. Um, yeah. Don't think, am I missing anything, Ariel? No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Just to say that you will be forced to, <laughs> to, to upgrade to ask a right, but, but it should be, it should work. Mm -hmm. And, and, well, also, well, we and to... also that, that, sorry. And also there is also, uh, we will have to test, but we are very close to have this. Uh, I think uh, to because we, we are using the, the the new feature of Ascar about ex for, for exporting and importing wallets. So maybe it's possible to it will be possible to to export a a wallet that is in SQLite to Postgre or or something like that. So we'll have to to investigate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, we intend on using Ascar with uh, 0 0.4 in the mobile app anyway, so I guess 0.5 is fine. 
Uh, but yeah, as you were just saying as well, um, we, we did migrate uh, the mediator from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And that, that, that was like it, a, a lot more complex. Uh, like even though it worked, it was still very difficult to do. Uh, the main reason was we were using a forked version of uh, NDVDR, uh, li li sorry, a forked version of LibIndy uh, called VDR Tools uh, by Evanim, uh, which was later maintained by ABSA. And the reason behind this was for uh, MySQL integration. Uh, so we had a MySQL uh, backend uh, database uh, and I think the main reason that we wanted MySQL instead of Postgres was our backend team was also using MySQL. They were using libvdr tools as well. So it made sense that we also had MySQL. And then when we wanted to migrate to uh, 0 0.4 and Asgar, of course, there was no MySQL support for uh, Asgar or, or libindi or anything, right? So we had to migrate to Postgres and in order to, it, it wasn't possible, it wasn't feasible to migrate any of the wallet uh, or any of the connections, any of the credentials of the mediator. Of course, there wasn't connect credentials, but connections or mediator uh, routing uh, entries. Uh, the reason was at the time, it wasn't very easy to import or export the, uh, the wallet or any of the data associated with the wallet. Um, so we actually decided that the best bet was just to start over. So, so we actually just recently integrated some new feature into the, uh, into, the, into the application, which checks to see if the mediator connection is outdated. And if it's outdated, then to create a new connection. So this is all done implicitly for the user. It doesn't, it's not in their face. It's just done in the background. But like for the back end, you know, we're, we're creating brand new connections. It's, we're using Postgres now instead, and we've successfully upgraded to 0 0.4. But it was quite difficult. Uh, but yeah, maybe in the future for other people, it's going to be easier going forward with the SQL Lite to Postgres uh, export and import. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what, what I was saying that, but, but for SQLite to Postgres, it could be possible we will have to, to do some work on that but it could be possible but but yes it's true that for my sql i don't know if it's uh, in asking so to, to support it natively by ascar we will need to 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 implement the the plugin or something like that in rust mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. export slash import is already possible with sql Lite, and i th i think it is but I don't think you can import a, an SQL Lite wallet into Postgres, or at least you couldn't at the time that we were looking at it. No, no, it, it, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. And it is not possible right now. But as we are now using a, a, a new feature from Ascar, in, in 0 0.5, we are using a new feature from Ascar, which is, uh, which is the store copy2. Uh, that should possibly allow to to switch uh, between backends, the database backends. I'm not sure, but uh, it can be possible. So maybe that's a good point to to, to research. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jakob, you were going to say something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I just, just uh, maybe a small correction about, about that, that VDR tools, MySQL, the decision was because the VDR tools implemented some better asynchronous uh, code, let's say, uh, in, in Rust. Ah, yeah. uh, so it, it should be more performance. So that, that was the main reason. And it, it supported only MySQL. So that was the reason. But yeah, and, and then, then of course, it's not like that's, this is nothing like against how the development of AFJ and Indy and these uh, three libraries proceeded or how it's going uh, on. Uh, because yeah, that's obviously it's something else, right? So, so uh that that's the problem if you if you if you use something else then then that it might it might be uh, difficult to do those migration but maybe it's just 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 a feedback for for future and even with that uh, database like postgres you know it's that's something i think it's it's really important to to be able to 
export import Postgres uh, to prevent uh, problems in the future. And you can easily maybe migrate those things. And uh, yeah, and maybe the question like, what what do what do you guys are using for database on on Mediator? Are you using like also Postgres or or are you using SQL Lite still? Well, we, we are, are... Oh, sorry, no, no, okay. <laughs> uh, we are using uh, uh, Postgres, yeah. And currently we okay. are uh, 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 like, we have just also uh, uh, worked on like multi-instance uh, deployments of the mediator, um, um, which had some issues um, um, in, in AFJ and we were able to like build that on top of AFJ now, but um, we do want to, yeah, probably see if we can make the APIs in uh, AFJ a bit better to to better support these uh, larger um, mediator uh, deployments, and also maybe uh, look at, uh, for example, the 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 tool that was built by Indicio um, to separate the like the WebSocket handling from the agent handling. Um, so you can have an agent that just processes, decrypts, encrypts messages, and you have another uh, other processes that can keep the web sockets um, open. Yeah, yeah, so that sounds good. But yeah, and uh, but honestly, like we we don't have men like right now we don't have many users, but we have been running it like without any any issue at all uh, so far. Uh, so. With, with this current setup, so yeah, I'm I'm just curious when when we, and and you wrote something that, that in the in the chat that it can it, it can happen pretty fast that that it's it doesn't scale, but yeah, so far it seems uh, so good with the uh, with the load. No, no, that's yeah. that's I uh, was specifically targeted at our deployment where we like we mm, yeah. more serverless deployment, so there's like very small containers with not a lot of like resources that is spun up um and if load increases there's more instances um uh being spun up but so you don't have like the whole time have a beefy mediator running that can handle um a lot of load but like more hmm. smaller ones so you can easily like adjust the number of instances based on the current load yeah yeah i see Okay, so I guess uh, that's all from us, Nile, right? Yeah, unless anyone has any, yeah, <laughs> unless anyone has any questions or feedback. Yeah, do I? Uh, yeah, I, I'm curious. Um, like you mentioned that the Epsa wallet is now in in production for. A few months, I think you uh, said. Um, what what specifically does production mean for Opsa? Uh, especially if if you also say like we don't have a lot of um, wallets currently. Like, what's the current state of being, and what's your goal to scale to? Yeah, like production actually means that it's available in app stores, right? Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, and like pr production also means that uh, we were, we are actually over more over the year in production uh, because we were running some pilot or was it this year or last year? I actually, I'm honest, I don't know right now. I think it was part of last but year. It, yeah. This is last year, right? 2020, yeah. yeah, like time spice. So yeah, we were running uh, like small pilot and in, in the, like the, the there was uh, some some financial product and and few hundreds of customers were actually onboarded to that product uh, through our mobile app but uh, then then uh, this this pilot like was stopped basically based on the, some some problems uh, with the product itself uh yeah and then from from that time we basically uh we basically don't have any any specific use case right now but uh other than uh, yeah, I I mean like production use case. We we of yeah. course are we are working with with other maybe companies uh, with some some ideas you know and trying things out how it can integrate with with other institutions. 
uh, that interoperability is defin definitely one one other thing. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the production for us, and, and yeah, right now, right now, uh, we should be. Uh, sometime next year, uh, we should have another uh, use case with with the real product. Okay. Any other questions or feedback from anyone? Okay. Thank you, Nail. Jakub. And uh, I think we have only five minutes, four minutes left. I don't know if we can, you can, uh, Karim, you can do some, if you're still here. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, I saw this coming. Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I can, I can quickly share my screen just to give you an update. Um, yeah uh can you see my screen no that, now you can um so the for the next step um for the move to the open wallet foundation is that we have to uh, uh make a proposal basically um proposing the move and filling it basically filling out this a uh, template they gave um which uh i am i'm using i'm proposing um uh, both bifold uh, uh, or bifold uh, the extensions and the framework all in one. I uh, checked this with uh, with Torsten from OWF, and that was fine. Um, the thing, I, most most of it is pretty okay, doable. Um, the uh, yeah, the only thing I was wondering about, or only few things, is infrastructure. I think we only use GitHub, right? We don't have any other external. Uh, services that we use for any of those repositories. Is that true? I think we use CodeCov. CodeCov, and that's paid? The not for open source, I think. Okay, well, it's good to... Yeah, nice. All right, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah, and the maturity level. So I've summarized... Uh, uh, the maturity they have like uh, three stages. You have a lab stage; it's the first for very young projects. Um, growth stage and the impact stage. I was hoping that we would be on the impact stage. However, that requires us to uh, be commonly used by an, in enterprise production environments, and I don't think that's the case right now. Um, so I went for growth. I hope you can read it all. Um, is this? Is this correct? Do people have other opinions? No. Okay. Silence. Uh, probably, uh, somewhere in in between. Uh, yeah. Like there's there's currently how many wallets already deployed to to the app stores? Yeah, quite like some. The, the Upsa wallet, Paradigm wallet. You have the Holder Plus uh, from Indicio. You have is your Easy wallet enough. in? First Ariel also or uh, we are we we are we are in in the process of publishing the app. Yeah, maybe in, it will be and was was the reason of this list? I just I just missed the question. This this we... this document is uh that it, it's mm -hmm. required if we want to propose a join uh to join OWF, they require us to fill out a proposal. So okay. this is based on a template basically. Mm -hmm. um, and this proposal, uh, 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 well, we propose to to move all three repositories, so extensions, uh, bifold, and the framework. Um, one thing we definitely don't have enough time for is the name, because that is a terrible thing. So I've for temporarily kept it on agent framework JavaScript, um, be purely because we can keep AFJ. Um, but uh, yeah, that will probably change. Uh, in the future so uh yeah we have to list uh, that's going to be fun uh we have to list uh, the uh, our uh external dependencies and their licenses mm. i ran a weird tool uh over the framework yesterday that uh, that lists all the licenses and there are a few unlisted or unlicensed uh things 
uh, dependencies or dependencies of dependencies. So I'm trying to figure out if it's only like uh, uh, top level dependencies or I don't th I don't think it's uh, this is taken too serious. If you if you look at the .NET uh, proposal, it's basically one line here or one line in the description, and that's it. So should be okay. So that's it from my side. And then we are out of time. Okay, can so you put the link uh, so people yeah. can comment? Or... Yeah, I have to open it up first and that I always mistake that. Let me see, publish. It should be at the top. Everyone, okay. Can somebody maybe verify that the thing works? Um... So you post it in the... Ah, yes. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I will I will post it in the meeting notes. So, yeah, it works. It works. Okay, perfect. All right then. Yes. So, thank you. Work in progress, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Please go make any comments you you want. So, thank you all, and see you in two weeks. Remember this. Uh, it is UTC minus eight, uh, six a.m. <laughs> we we don't uh, miss the the meeting again. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, bye -bye. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Nice to meet you.